I got my PhD in infectious diseases and microbiology, and then I promptly switched fields to neuroscience uh, so I could study the neuroimmune interface. So this, for me, came with a lot of challenges. I had never taken a neuroscience class or a physiology class, so you can imagine I had to really get up to speed. However, I do recommend making some sort of shift in your research, whether it's going to a different model or something. You have to sort of change it up a little bit from what you did in graduate school. And the advice that I would have um, for someone making the transition is number one, most important thing is you have to know your worth. There's three key elements I think about um, as I made the transition and as I'm trying to grow and evolve. And they include one, um, to uh, set goals and to write them down, whether it's every six months or um, when you first start and they evaluate them in six months, maybe a year or two years. And then once you have your goals really set, think about how you can uh, speak with your mentor and align those goals. Um, so that also see if those goals are realistic and if you can set expectations to achieve those goals. Secondly, I think having that support group, whether it's um, someone scientifically that challenges you so that you can grow and also make it a give and take relationship so that you can help that person grow. Then you can bounce ideas off of them. They can tell you if they're silly, if they're not silly. And it really helps you in, uh, uh, gauge where you are um, as a scientist and competitively or not. And then I think you also need to go out and meet people and become active and involved either in the postdoc association or um, think about other workshops and other opportunities where you can go to meet people. And then lastly, I think that you have to have fun. This is, I think, the last opportunity where we really get a chance to figure things out, right? The next stage is gonna be your career launch. This is your career launching state step. And so you need to enjoy it, not have so much stress, um, and make sure that our mental health is in check. And so those are the three things I think I'm learning how to do, and I think it's making me a happier person, and as a result of that, I thrive in the lab because I can think clearly and uh, think of novel ideas that can be useful um, for my next step, and then also be able to de-stress when writing grants or writing papers. Probably what was more challenging, it's also that um, I came from Spain, so you have to adapt to a new culture and specifically a new language, so this can be challenging. And what I would say to the um, future postdoc, so to enjoy the moment, because it's a very beautiful moment to the, do this transition, to do that when they think that they are ready for, uh, for this transition, and to be open-minded, because you need to adapt to, adapt to a, a new lab, and every lab has their own rules, so you need to adapt uh, in these uh, new rules. And also I will suggest to do um, a project that is different from your PhD project because as a scientist you always want to keep learning. And uh, probably if they have the chance to, to move abroad because when you move abroad uh, you learn a new culture, new language and you also grow as a, as a person. When I made my transition from being a graduate student to a postdoctoral fellow, the first thing I felt was surprise. And that's because I was given a cubicle and a computer and resources and said, find some research to pursue. Um, I was certainly provided with support by my PIs and my investigators, but unlike when I was a graduate student, it was up to me how I was gonna spend my time and what I was going to study. So I think I found it to be very surprising how much latitude I had, um, and I appreciated that because it really allowed me to grow and to learn to take the initiative and make decisions to pursue research that I was most passionate about. The advice that I would give to um, students who are transitioning from a graduate student role into a postdoctoral fellowship is to really make decisions with the end in mind. So think about where do they want to be at the end of the postdoctoral period and how will that inform where they want to be five years down the line. And, and oftentimes um, at the selection of a postdoctoral uh, fellowship program, it's the time to make a slight transition, even if it's just you know, slightly 45 degrees or 20 degrees from where they were studying before, it's an opportunity to develop a new skill that will inform their future careers. So transitioning from graduate student to postdoc was a little bit difficult, and it was a, a longer transition than I had anticipated. I thought I was ready to go on the postdoc market. 
a year before my committee thought so. So I had already begun to interview and find some labs and I actually had a lab that had committed to me and I had to report back to them, actually I have another year and they were thankfully able to, to keep my position for a year until I was able to write up, you know, convince my, my faculty mentor and my dissertation committee that I was ready, write it up, defend it, and a week after my defense, I started my postdoc. Advice I would give to postdocs is to make sure that you have other resources. You're not the only one doing this. You can use your peers as resources. You can reach out to offices and career services that you shouldn't be doing this alone. That's my advice. The transition that I had from being a graduate student to be a, a postdoc was actually pretty easy because I found a mentor with whom I wanted to work. Um, and so I, was, I, went, I had a really supportive graduate advisor um, and I had a really supportive postdoc mentor. And so that was the most important thing for me. And so the transition was pretty easy. As I've been in this role, I recognize how rare that is for a lot of folks, and I feel very fortunate that that was my experience. Um, but I feel it also gives me an idea of how good it can be. Uh, and so when I talk with folks, um, it's easier to point out times when they may not be receiving the kind of support that they should be or could be, and then uh, I can bring up the opportunities to find other people who can do those things for them. I guess my advice is it's okay. And give yourself permission to be different and give yourself permission not to do what is expected from you. Because sometimes graduate students and even postdocs expect to be faculty, expect to be published and expect to be, there's a lot of expectations. And I think it's very important to say, you know what? It's okay if I don't wanna be a faculty. It's okay if I don't wanna publish. It's okay if I wanna to move to Japan. And it was very important for me. So one of the challenges, I come from Russia and my background in Russia was humanities. And then I moved to the States and I decided you know, to be a biomedical scientist. And then I decided to be somebody else. And as I mentioned, the multiple identities, I think we really need to entertain them all and see which one fits. Just try them out and just whatever your preferences are. I think another important thing to do in the postdoc, since now you don't have coursework or dissertation or any of these things that like you have to do, is you should be carving out time as a postdoc to build skills beyond your academic skills, whether that's volunteering in some organization you're really interested in and getting leadership skills, whether that's writing for uh, a local uh, organization or blogging or whatever, if you're into science communication, but trying to find other avenues where you can see if those types of uh, traits, like leadership traits or communication traits, are something that one, you're good at, but two, you like, because that may also help you think about, well, what else can I do after this postdoc? And you maybe learn about other you know, career paths that you weren't thinking of, and you kind of tested them out and kind of prototyped it before you, you went down the path. So while you're still a postdoc in the relative safety of the postdoc, you can kind of be experimenting with other potential roles on the side and you don't have you know, a class you have to be at, so you can kind of work around that freedom to explore other, um, I guess, jobs or other tasks you could do with your life. When I think about the start of my postdoc, I have to smile because I wish someone had reeled me in a little bit. I came right out of the gate with this independent project, and it sounded amazing on paper, but it was completely outside of my own biochemistry skill set, and I had a lot to learn. And I was really, really ambitious. And I think that can be a wonderful thing for a postdoc if they're also mindful of all the ways they can get help. But I was really stubborn, and I just put my head down and thought, I'll just be able to learn this all on my own, and I'm expected to learn this all on my own, um, because I felt like there was this expectation to be super independent. and so. For me, I made it harder than it needed to be. And I think if I had just owned up to the fact that I had maybe bit off a little bit more than I could chew in, in terms of some of the things I had to learn and had asked more questions early on, I would have been productive sooner. And so I got there eventually, but I had to get out of my own way. And so while there's an exciting opportunity to be independent as a postdoc, I definitely would tell my former postdoc self um, to get some help to get there. 